So in this video, we're going to look at a new treatment for male pattern baldness called pyrolusamide, or if you really want to be fancy, it's called KX826. So people have been losing their mind saying this is the best thing to hit the market for years, it's going to solve hair loss, but they forgot something. They forgot that I'm a pharmacist. This is my field. It takes more than a couple of cute headlines on Wikipedia and Google to persuade me. So I did what I do. I looked at the data. I looked in the right places. I opened all the right doors. And in this video, I'm going to tell you whether this new supposed treatment, it's what is cracked up to be or, or whether it's just another pile of rubbish. Welcome to the channel. My name is Jabril. So this pyrolutamide or KX-826, it's basically a topical anti-androgen. So when it eventually comes out, it's going to be in cream or lotion or solution form. It's going to be something you apply to the skin. It's not going to be something that you take orally or... An anti-androgen basically means it blocks the main hormones that cause hair follicles to fall out, things like DHT or testosterone. So the way it works is quite simple to explain. But unfortunately, the company don't go into really deep detail about how this works, but it's fair enough, it's still early days. So what's the latest? Where are we with this new treatment? And I mean, basically how soon is it gonna be on the market? Before I explain that, it's really worth it for especially people who are not of science background watching this video to explain what does it take to develop a treatment? I mean, it's not like, you know, launching a, a you know, a, a brand of razors. It's a bit more complex than that. This is something that people are gonna use on their bodies. So there's a lot more checks that take years. And basically this graphic explains how treatments or drugs get developed. And as you can see, uh, the first phase is basically what we call the uh, drug discovery phase. That takes three to five years. This is mostly in the lab. You know, they kind of test out the drug uh, in petri dishes and um, basically everything is within the lab. No, no people are involved at this stage. Same thing with the, what they call the preclinical phase, which takes one to two years. We're still in the lab. Uh, at this stage, there might be, you know, some testing on animals or things like that. And then we move on to um, phase one. This is when you start to see people actually being recruited into the um, experiment or the, or the trial. And this takes about one year and it's very limited numbers as you can see, up to 10 people max. And then we move on to phase two, then phase three, phase four. And as you can see, as we go through the phases, the number of participants becomes more and more. So. By, by the last phase, phase five, 200 plus people are involved. The other thing I need to explain is, uh, up to phase two, we're looking at the actual drug itself. We're not comparing it to anything else. But at phase three onwards, that's when we compare this new treatment to existing treatments. So in phase three, this potential new treatment would be compared to things that are already on the market things like Propecia, for example. And the question would be, is it better than what we already have? And that could be another potential hurdle. If it's not better than what we already have, it's probably not gonna be, you know, we're not gonna carry on the experiment any further. So there are a lot of potential hurdles to clear. The company that is developing this particular treatment, they're called Kinto Pharmaceutical. Uh, in August 2022, they said they've concluded subject enrollment in the phase two trials of this particular treatment. And uh, the total number of people was 121 patients. As you can see in the last graphic, we are in phase two, which takes approximately two years. And after that, there's still phase three and four to clear. So I would say we are just over uh, the halfway point of this journey. If you are thinking of having a hair transplant, one of the most important things is make sure your donor hair is as good as it can be. And one thing that can help you is Foligrow, a blend of powerful, tailor-made vitamins and minerals specifically to strengthen hair both before and after a hair transplant. If you want to try it, the link is in the description below. Another interesting thing I discovered is what the people who are testing this treatment, what are they looking for? What is the sign that this uh, treatment is a success, that it works? And basically they said, we are looking for the change in non-velous target area hair counts at week 24 
from baseline. So let me break that down. So what they're looking for is they're gonna take the 121 people who are in the trial now, and they're gonna count their, their hair before the, uh, the experiment starts, and then they're gonna wait 24 weeks for people to actually use the treatment, and then they're gonna count their hair again to compare. If there's an increase in the number of hairs, then they will see that as a success. It's really quite simple. Don't forget, this is not the end of the journey because then they have to compare it to the existing treatments we have on the market, things like Propecia. They're gonna say, Does, is this actually any better than Propecia? And the answer needs to be yes for this drug to continue on its development journey. So what is the news on how effective this treatment is? To be honest, there's little news, little clear news so the, the treatment has cleared phase, two, phase one, uh, which is good. So we know that it's actually effective, you know, at some level and it's quite safe. We know that because that's what the early phases are designed to tell us. But how effective? Is it 10% more effective than we, what we already have on the market? Is it 20% more effective? Is it 50% more effective? That is yet to be established. So for all these YouTube videos that say that, oh yeah, this is more effective than Propecia, blah, blah, blah absolute garbage that has not been established yet hold your horses another thing i looked at is the quality of the study because studies are different levels and some are low quality uh, we call them observational studies so this is when you just observe things they are considered the least good type of studies and the good news is the studies being done on this particular treatment in my opinion are of the highest quality they are what we call double blind parallel group randomized placebo controlled trials and in a nutshell that basically means you know the people who are carrying out the experiment and people who are receiving the treatment don't know what is being given and this is what we call a very high class uh, study design so where are the studies being done so the company uh, developing the drug is chinese and they're doing a lot of their experiments and uh, designs and trials in china but they've also been given a license to open a new study center in the US, which is quite promising because obviously in the US, they, um, they check before they give licenses to any Tom, Dick and Harry. So obviously they've done, the, they've done their checks and they're happy that the studies is of sufficient quality to continue. So are there any guarantees this will actually become a treatment on the market? And simple answer is no. And let me give you the three reasons why I give this answer. The first obvious reason is that it could fail the phase three or four or five trials. So it could just something could happen that it has to stop, whether it's a safety issue or whether it's an efficacy issue, we don't know. It could fail at any stage from now going forward. Or it could go through all the phases successfully and then the company who make the drug present or apply to have it licensed, say in the US, Canada, the UK, those kind of places, and then the authorities in those countries can just look at the data and say, you know what, we're not happy with this. Um, you've made an error here, this is wrong, that's wrong, we're just gonna reject your application. And then the company might just give up. So they could actually fail at the very last hurdle, right at the end, maybe five years from now. And the third reason is the people that actually make the treatment could just give up, could just um, uh, get this far and think that, you know what, we don't really see this working. There's, uh, we don't, we've overestimated the market potential. Uh, it just, it just doesn't make any financial sense to continue with this. We're going to cut our losses and we're going to stop all the development, and we're not going to even apply for a license. So any of these um, three things could thwart this treatment becoming an actual treatment that you and I and other people can try. So how long do I think it will be before this is actually? a drug or a treatment on the market. Looking at the phase that it's in now, they're just getting around to recruiting people for their phase two trials. I would say at best, it's gonna be about six years, and at worst, it's gonna be about eight. So between six and eight years in my estimation. So all these people saying that, you know, this is imminent or it's gonna be on the market within the next couple of years, I don't think so. There's still a lot of hurdles to clear.